Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Land Rover Discovery Sport and the Audi A6 as well. But let's get the A6 out of the picture and straight away jump into the Discovery Sport. Straight away I'm going to be opening the engine bay. Hydraulic struts, engine bay is compact, quite noisy, but it's not as noisy on the inside. There's insulation right there as well. Now this gets the typical Land Rover design which obviously looks really very nice. I love the lights. Look at the lights. Great attention to detail on the lights itself and uh, the fogs are here. front parking sensors the grill is typical of a land rover and yeah this car got a facelift really recently which means that we do we're going to do a super quick walk around of this car and the wheels are 18 inches good amount of sidewall on offer as well and the car isn't really long as such but when you come to the rear you realize one thing okay the lights look kind of aftermarket there's a camera there hsc written discovery boldly written there's a spoiler and this is not a range rover so obviously the camera does not get a washer the rear washer wiper can actually be seen dual exhaust tips as well rear parking sensors and the spare wheel is actually placed here below which is not an alloy is also a smaller size spare wheel now you might ask why has this happened well it's happened for a reason because this happens to be a seven seater yep that's right this is actually a seven seater i know the last row of seats are only for soft toys but still it is a seven seater which actually eats into the boot when you open the last row of seats as you can see space is very poor under thigh support is non existent because your knees will definitely touch your chest however there is a blower right there which is a nice touch and obviously ac vents too so land rover actually tried to make it practical for soft toys as well press this button and you can actually recline the seat which is again very practical yeah so you have a lot of flexibility with this car you see there is a charging socket a usb charging socket and a 12 volt charging socket as well this car has seven charging sockets one for each passenger so land rover has thought about everybody in this car yeah that is some attention to detail and practicality meanwhile you can obviously increase uh, the space at the rear by pulling the seat ahead or behind you can see amount of leg room which can be compromised here to increase it on the rear is massive but under thigh support cannot be increased there's good amount of space on offer yeah definitely good amount of space under thigh support is decent and there's good amount of headroom on offer as well there's a light placement right there hook hook handle cabin is wide enough there is also a center armrest with twin cup holders meanwhile there's storage space below here too all adjustable headrest in this car not for the last row though but there are airbags there too okay practical here again 12 volt charging socket cabin does feel airy and spacious thanks to the base treatment and a massive panoramic roof that massive panoramic roof might might be massive but it does not open at all yeah it is big but doesn't open at all so it's a land rover it feels rugged definitely and i love the fact that you know power window controls are here on the top you get multiple adjustment for the seat as well so power adjust electric adjust whatever you want to call it straight inside the cabin doesn't look all that special somehow you get a touch screen which kind of looks small and obviously you get a charging socket there so you know there is a big glove box too and the plastic quality is decent but you know hard plastics are also in plenty now this doesn't seem hard but lower ones are definitely on the harder side so it looks more functional and rugged than you know being appealing to the eyes as such the roof i was talking about massive panoramic roof does not open at all so in neha's language i would say kya pure paise nahi bhare kya <laughs> anyways as you can see like yes it's very rugged you sit at a high position and gets a headlight washer as well which is indeed a nice touch so wipers work brilliantly well on this car good amount of spray for sure meanwhile this touch screen looks a little small there are cameras on offer their parking sensors as well and uh, you know they self park too meanwhile as you can see these are the controls for the air conditioning this is for the terrain response system so right now it's in drive or either road mode and you can obviously shift to grass gravel snow and then there's also mud ruts and there's also a sand program there's an eco mode which is useless in a land rover downhill assist traction control handbrake electric handbrake actually storage space is plenty in this car in fact you can see so many charging ports here usb aux same navigation and also a 12 volt charging socket so you know people who love media who love to be on the smartphones plenty of options right there controls here but you know this thing looks a bit too plain for my liking the instrument cluster and the horn is also nice let's turn off the air conditioning this thing goes down when you turn off the car comes up and out when you turn it on yeah the rotary dial that's also very sweet but since you know land rover is going to get the facelift any moment let's just focus on the driving shall we 
Oh, by the way, the Meridian sound system is also epic. All right, we're all set to go, which means getting it into sport mode, turning off the stop start system, turning off traction control as well, air conditioning off, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, revs till 3000 RPM. As you can see, performance is brisk. The motor does get loud as you push it harder and faster. But for the most part, performance is quite brisk. And the gearbox is always willing to put you in a higher gear somehow. Now this car is powered by two diesel engines. Actually the diesel engine is one, but the tune is two. So it's a two liter diesel four cylinder Ingenium motor, which in the lower trim offers 147 PS of power and 382 Newton meters of torque. Meanwhile, the higher trims like this one, the HSC, comes with a more powerful engine which produces 177 horsepower and 430 newton meters of torque so because of this difference in power and torque between the variants land rover feels that customers who want more fuel economy will opt for the lower trim probably or probably you have to pay higher just because you want to get more power it's like you know the germans will give you cars which are very fast like the m5 and the e63 but in order to go faster you have to buy the driver's package by paying money and unlocking stuff looks like the same thing is here with land rover as well the performance on this engine is quite good in fact the peak torque of 430 newton meters comes at a low 1750 rpm and stays all the way to 2500 rpm actually all the way is the wrong top let's delete that and stays up to 2500 rpm so there's a slight bit of a torque band as well which means performance is great low end lag is kept out of way and drivability is great too so turbo lag being well contained makes this car quite brisk in city driving as well so once you get hard onto the gas the gearbox is willing to downshift and then it pulls strongly as well in fact it has got good amount of punch till three and a half thousand rpm and in the top end it obviously lags red lines all the way to 4500 rpm this two liter engine actually replaces the 2.2 liter unit which was also available in two sets of tunes 150 ps and 190 ps which means that they have actually reduced the power output by 10 ps when compared to the older engine however they have actually improved the drivability so the loss in power is okay acceptable that said you have paddle shifters on offer here and you can make a downshift quickly from this nine speed gearbox yes it's a nine speed gearbox but the problem here is that the gearbox isn't the fastest shifting meanwhile it is a bit jerky at lower speeds but you know even when you manually take control of things it will upshift it will not hold on to a gear it will not say command shift activated and you know you can hold on to a gear as much as you want it will simply upshift so that's a little bit disappointing here in terms of fuel economy this car will return around 12 kilometers per liter which is quite respectable however outright performance is not going to put a smile on your face it takes almost nine and a half seconds to go from zero to 100 kilometers per hour which actually makes it slow for its price point however what land rover could have done is given it more power considering other cars in its segment do offer a lot more oomph now this is heavy as well engine noise is kept out of way at lower speeds however especially when you get past the mid-range it gets vocal and there is sort of that dieselness which can be heard which i actually like i think it's kind of sporty minute wheel spin anyways this car also comes with an eco mode offering an eco mode in a luxury car or in a land rover is akin to us making those you know stupid margins in our exam paper it's unnecessary and pointless and that's the reason here as well why would you want an eco mode in a land rover anyways for those who actually use the eco mode in a land rover kudos to you you should have well opted for something with a smaller engine anyways that said let's come to the major talking point here which is the way this car drives firstly it gives you a good feel because you sit in a very commanding position and it gives you a good view of what's around there is this ruggedness which is associated with Land Rover and the Discovery Sport, although being the entry-level Land Rover is no different at all. First and foremost, you do feel you're driving something which is special and different because unlike other cars in its segment, it just has the rugged appeal to it. Everything feels so robust somehow. And you know, the faster you drive it, the more rewarding it is somehow because it does have great high-speed stability. And most importantly, this engine, because it makes some amount of noise, it adds to that rugged Land Rover feel. As you can see, performance is adequate, but it could have been better without a doubt. And body roll is well contained, although there is some amount of roll on offer and the steering does offer a good amount of feel and feedback as well. Ride quality is really very good indeed. The only problem here is that it is slightly on the stiffer side and out on the road, you can hear a lot more of the tire noise than supposedly this car. Although, you know, the cabin insulation could have been slightly better.
the motor isn't as fast revving as i would expect a diesel engine to rev yeah diesel engines don't rev really fast but the bmw diesel engine has really spoiled us for choice this motor really does not rev as fast as i would have expected it to be and then it takes its own sweet time now gearing is also on the taller side it has got nine freaking gears yes nine freaking gears that is the reason why fuel economy is also good especially out on the highway in fact when you're doing 100 kilometers per hour in top gear which is ninth gear it is taking the engine at around 1500 rpm which makes it very composed and calm at higher speeds here 100 shifting up 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 and we are in top gear right now when we are in top gear as you can see the motor is just so freaking relaxed So in terms of outward performance, I would say that the Land Rover Discovery Sport really does not shine a lot. And it's not supposed to because this car is not about on-road driving as much as it is about all-rounder performance. And trust me, there is where it shines because I actually took the car off-road. Yeah, I'll put a shot of the car being driven off-road. And when I was driving it off-road, trust me, it really excels because it drives supremely well off the road. It has a water weighting capacity of 600 mm. That's right, 600 mm of water weighting capacity. It has got great ramp over angles and breakthrough angles and departure angles and what not, making it really very composed off the road as well and of course it's also got the terrain response system it's not an auto terrain response system but you have modes to select and it actually works the only gripe or rather the only issue i actually faced when i took the vehicle off-road was the fact that it simply does not have the ground clearance yeah it needs an air suspension setup which will obviously help its cause when you go off the road because you can raise the suspension but this is not the flagship land rover this happens to be the entry level land rover which replaced the freelander 2 now globally obviously land rover has updated the discovery sport comprehensively but sadly and unfortunately that model hasn't reached india yet so this car is on its way out without a doubt and it started to feel its age as well in certain areas and needed a botox shot which land rover has given it globally but i don't know why the delay in getting it to india the steering also offers good amount of feel it's light at lower speeds weighs up brilliantly at higher speeds so yes in terms of feel and feedback the steering is pretty good as well and most importantly this is a car whose ride and handling balance is very 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 nice The Land Rover Discovery Sport is available in seven variants in India. Yeah, seven variants are offered in India, out of which five are for the diesel, two are for the petrol. And amongst them, this happens to be the second variant from the top, which means this is the HSE and not the top of the line HSE luxury, which also gets some more bells and whistles. So, what is the price of this car? Anyone can guess? Well, yeah, yeah, you are, yeah, 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 you are right. It is rupees 69 lakhs. The range actually starts at rupees 55 lakhs and goes all the way to 75 lakhs for the top of the line variant. Now this car doesn't really come with driving modes as such and uh, it only has this sport mode which is on the gear lever which actually holds up the revs and gives it slightly more oomph. Meanwhile in the various off-road modes, actually the off-road modes can be called as the drive modes, in those modes it actually alters the engine, the gearbox as well as the braking performance of the vehicle and it also works on the all-wheel drive system of this vehicle and the all-wheel drive system does such a great job that even with the traction control off there is no loss of traction whatsoever and that's not all, there's so much grip on offer from the tyres as well, now these are road tyres which makes it good. So should you buy a Land Rover Discovery Sport? Well, to be honest, I would say wait for the updated model because that's going to be coming out real soon because in certain areas, this car actually feels dated. However, in terms of ruggedness, off-road capability, and of course, the feel-good factor, the Land Rover Discovery Sport is one of the best options in the segment. The only unfortunate part is that this is now one of the oldest cars in the segment. Meanwhile, every other car has got a comprehensive update. We've got a new BMW X3. We've got a new Audi Q5. There's obviously the fantastic Volvo XC60 as well and if you want to go down the Lexus range well Lexus also has an option in the segment if you're looking for something which is reliable although supremely overpriced that said that doesn't come with a diesel engine this one does gets both petrol and diesel engines the diesel obviously is the one you should opt for if you're looking for frugal performance meanwhile the petrol actually offers more performance without a doubt however this whole strategy of you know differentiating horsepower is something I simply do not understand 
Now throughout this video you might feel that uh, the camera angle is not straight because actually the alignment of the steering has gone for a toss. The toss speed of this vehicle happens to be somewhere around 200 km per hour and as you can feel the stiffness over rumblers but for the most part I love the ruggedness of this vehicle. I just can't wait for the updated Discovery Sport to be launched in the Indian market. By the way it also gets mild hybrid tech and whatnot, which will obviously boost its appeal for luxury car buyers so guys this is my vlog on the land rover discovery sport and if you liked it you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon say bye bye bye